Well, good morning. It is November the 20th, 2022. It is a very cold and frosty Sunday morning, and it is the end of a cold snap that we are having. Uh, the early season is kind of officially over. We've turned over into late November. We're approaching the middle and later parts of the waterfowling season. Uh, the early migrations have definitely arrived seems like there's just ducks everywhere where the conditions are right and hunting has turned on like a light switch it seems like pretty much everywhere um, a lot of guys are doing really good uh, west side and east side of the state i'm back down here hunting the coastal tidal marshes just because the rains really haven't arrived yet in mass to flood the fields and there's still quite a few birds here um, it wasn't too windy today but just because there's a huge influx of newer birds, there's just a lot of them around right now. Um, it started out really slow at shooting hours, and then as the tide rose and started flooding more areas, the ducks came with it, as they usually do. It just seems like hunting down here on tidal flats is just fast and furious, bam, 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 while the, while the water's coming in, and, uh, and then it's over with, you know? Uh, it actually got better when I was picking up decoys. There were a lot more birds moving in and flying all around, working really close this morning. We're moving into the Thanksgiving week. Uh, traditionally, rain usually comes in this week of November pretty hard. Uh, the forecast is going back and forth. I'm leaving my options open for this next big break. Uh, kind of like a wild card. I'm gonna let the weather dictate what I do, where I see the best conditions. That's where I'm gonna to try to hunt. Thus far, November has been lights out this year. It's living up to its name and historical statistics as being the month of the most numbers of ducks. I think I killed my hundredth duck today of the season and then I went beyond it a little bit. So setting myself up for a good last couple weeks in November, moving into December to uh, really try and just challenge myself and see if I see what limits I can push in the waterfowling world. Here's a closer look at the ducks from today. A lot of green wing teal around right now. A lot of hens, not too many drakes. Got three widgeon. All three of them came in and all three of them died. One big drake mallard. A couple of mallards I've gotten at this spot in the last couple of days have just been huge thick layers of fat, they're going to roast up pretty good. It's been requested that I do a review of the shotguns that I use while I go waterfowl hunting. In early season, salt water, brackish water, tide flats. Uh, I use the Browning BPS. Uh, this is a newer gun of mine. It's also their newest model of the Browning pump shotgun. It has a 28 inch barrel, it's chambered for 2 and 3 quarter, 3 inch and 3 and a half inch magnums. It comes with a variety of choke tubes, there's modified improved cylinder and full. I almost always shoot full in all situations and I shoot modified probably a couple of spots that I hunt. Everywhere else I pretty much shoot full choke out of my guns. I like that it's camouflaged, it won't rust as easy, and it can take a beating. It beads down really nice, swings really good, and it shoots pr pretty straight. The gun has one humongous downside that I have discovered. 
If you want to take the gun apart for cleaning, you must beware. When you take the trigger assembly out and you pull that pin out, and you take it apart, and you clean in there, everything's good, the ejector pins come right out, but then when you put it all back together, if the ejector pins, if all of that is not aligned perfectly, the gun will not go back together. And the first time I took it apart, it went right back together. The second time I took it apart, it did not go right back together, and I tried everything. I looked at some YouTube videos, some really great ideas out there on how to put the BPS back together, and I just could not get it done. I took it to a real special, uh, skilled gunsmith, and he could not get it put back together, and eventually he had to send it back to Browning, and they reassembled it and sent it back to him. And now the problem is it does not feed the third shell. It did before. It'll feed the first two, and sometimes the third one will not get fed into the chamber from the magazine. Where taking it apart and putting it together is the BPS's uh, downside. I think a, a strength of it is the fact that it ejects its shells out of the bottom of the gun. This keeps a lot more water out of the chamber and out of the action of the shotgun, eliminating the need to clean it so much. So I really don't think you need to take it apart as much, but still got to figure out how to get it put back together, because I can't send it back into Browning every year when I got to do an annual maintenance clean on the guns. Nice! Hell yeah, dude. Well, the good gunning in the month of November continues down here on Washington saltwater tide flats. Now, we pulled 21 ducks today, and uh, it's the second to last day of my Thanksgiving break. It's over the Thanksgiving holiday right now. Uh, the tides are coming out of a really high phase. It was, a, it was a new moon a couple days ago, and we're pushing 11 foot, 11 three foot tides right now, and it's flooding these fields perfectly and uh, the ducks are still really concentrated down here. Uh, at the beginning of the month, it was nothing but pintails, it seemed like, down here, and they've kind of moved on, and today it was just, this whole weekend, uh, a lot of green wing teal, waves of them, gobs of them. Uh, a lot of big ducks too, but they kind of evaded us as well. Uh, we're right before a giant cold front that's supposed to move in and close down November and say hello to December, 
with hopefully some snow next week. So I've always heard that when the weather's coming down from Canada in the north, the green wing teal are usually preceding it and the mallards come in right behind them. Bang up day, man. Now you're gunning the flats. It's awesome. Smoking through really quick. Yeah, it was so hard. And it was a super fast pass shot for a lot of those lower ones. But this might be close to the most teal I've ever gotten. The big ducks were out there. They were way out there. Mm -hmm. I could tell. I was seeing more of them. We kind of spread out, hunted some different spots today. We didn't even hear Sarah shooting. And, <laughs> and then when, uh, when I called her, she said she had four. You didn't even know. And then <laughs> she finished hers up a few minutes ago, right over here behind us. And the birds are still working. They're coming in off the bay pretty strong. We got one more day of hunting for me, at least in November, that I know of, unless you know, we get inclement weather. So, hope we can get out tomorrow, get one more good day out of this awesome month, and close it down in style. Yeah, yeah. That seem good? Uh huh. Well, <laughs> good. All right, and here's a close up of the birds today. Late November. Tide flat puddlers. Sarah got some really nice drake widge in there. One hen. She's got three green wing teal. Now we're moving on to my pile. Probably wondering why there's a sawbill in the mix there. There was a group of three that came in with one green wing teal mixed in behind them. And I was trying to shoot the teal. And I got the merganser instead, and counting it towards the limit. And I got six green wing teal, three really nice drakes right there. They all cook up really good. They're actually one of my favorite ducks to eat. And Nick, I, we traded off. We did a we did a BPS trade off limit. I shot my seven, and then I handed the gun off to Nick, and he shot his seven. Got quite a few teal there, it's got some widgeon, and then over here he made an epically long shot on that hen pintail. Cleaned her clock, one, one pellet is all it takes. It is Sunday, November the 27th, and Nick and I are taking up a challenge and hunting a new spot today. Never hunted here before. We've hunted spots close to here, and there's already quite a few birds moving around. We're kind of waiting for the tide to drop. I'm going to try and get some divers, and we already found a good spot for the puddlers when the tide comes back up. We kind of have a little bit of a spread set up. We're sitting on this point of land out here. And we're not doing too bad. There's a lot of ducks returning. They really want to be in this spot. Um, they're rafted up out there on the bigger water right now as we speak. And uh, it's always really cool when you come into a new area and get your first green head at that spot. It came over really low. Searching around, he saw those big canvas back decoys over there. He wanted to be with them. I was checking them out, and uh, I brought them down with the browning. I love it. 
hoping we can get some more. When the tide comes in, I think it's going to be really good. We're going to fall further back. They can't really land back there right now because there's no water. Somebody up around the corner from here is getting a lot of shooting. So I'm already pretty happy making the decision to come down here. And there's a glimpse look at the sun for what is forecasted to turn into a pretty snotty, windy, wintry day today. That there looks like rain and storm coming our way. We are going to pick up where we're at right now. We're going to relocate to a different spot we think might produce a little bit more action. All right, we have relocated to a different spot. Seen quite a few ducks working this stretch of beach right here. And uh, combined what decoys we have into one long spread. It's just about low tide right now. Got about another 20 minutes of the ebb. It's a really peaceful spot, really quiet. Really hear too much other than the sounds of nature. The water is flooding in rather quickly now, and I'm getting ready to make second move of the day. The wind's kind of picking up out of the west-northwest right now, and uh, I want to move back up in this cove right here. All the birds are really going up in that bay of water on the other side over there. And the water is going to come up another six feet, probably from what it is now. So, that'd be a good evening shoot tonight. All right, we have moved one more time here. And we are laying in the aquapods. This flooded grass, cattails. You can probably see Nick over there. Crack shot on that one. Right when we got set up, so far so good. It's still in five minutes. Didn't take very long at all. I got my first duck laying out here like this. It is starting to rain, and the weather seems like it is deteriorating. And I might be putting the camera away for a bit here. As it gets wetter, and the tide gets higher. 
I'm not going to give up quite yet though. I think we each have about three more ducks to get. And picking them off slowly. We have moved another time further back to these flooded pockets back here in this really tall canary grass. Uh, believe it or not, this is really deep water right now. We gotta kinda stay in the pods. I came over here first after Nick got his limit and then a pair of cupped mallards came over the trees behind me and uh, I shot and I knew I hit him and he went way out over towards Nick and then uh, it's one of those, you know, the pellet in the lungs and then you die and look what he had on him. Look at that. Jewelry. What a day. Take a closer look at that later, huh? Look at the digits on it. Died way off in the distance. Nick got him and brought him to me and held the band hidden in his hand and then threw it to me. We both had a moment of celebration. Just a really awesome day. Can't even capture all of it on film. There's just too much going on. Well, this concludes uh, the month of November. 2022 it's the last weekend that I could probably hunt this month and uh, came down here and tried a new spot and it was a success in every way possible you could imagine um, really happy with the results of today even though I didn't end up with a limit Nick did get his limit and uh, we just learned a lot about this new place you know we've hunted close to here before in the past over on the Oregon side uh, but we've never really tried it up here before and um, you know to come into a new spot you don't know much about you know we didn't get here for shooting hours we kind of rolled in after it got daylight and to be able to do this I mean it's pretty impressive on our part I have to say um, it's just I just feel like we've arrived on so many different levels you know as waterfowlers and uh, it's just good to be out here you know really quiet spot really wild peaceful you know lots of weather moving through it got I thought it was almost gonna start hailing there at one point you know uh, really dark gray clouds rolling over the foothills you know it's just I just can't explain half the time a lot of the feelings that I got sitting out here just in the marsh you know sitting here with my friend Nick you know just probably one of my best hunting companions ever you know, and this is what we live for, for sure. Making good shots, you know, pulling limits of ducks if we can. But if we don't pull limits, just starting with one, you know, and just doing the right thing. Yeah. Coming out here and making it happen. Yeah, speaking on making some good shots, just shooting, um, I don't, I usually shoot a modified with a, uh, with fours, that's like my, that's my absolute favorite. But in that big water today, the, the huge difference makers using extended full choke with three inch twos, that, that made a world of difference. A lot, a lot of 40, 45, close to around 50 yard shots. That's all, all the birds were at that range and they were, you know, that, that was really cool. So <clears throat> yeah, open water for sure, extended full. About the same distance it seemed like as a, a three and a half inch, you know, that's, that's what it seemed like I was shooting three and a half, so just three inch twos and it worked really good. I don't think I would have gotten one of these ducks today if it wasn't for number two pellets. You know, I was shooting them all day, but uh, one of them in particular. Yeah, the, this one was crazy, man. So I get done and he goes, he's heading back um, further behind us to go get his last few ducks he needs to get. And uh, he's not over there long, about five minutes. And I hear the gun go off and I look up in the air and I see some ducks flying and I'm watching this, he shot twice at this bird and I'm watching it and watching it and it's flying towards me. And um, it, may, it came out of there a good, you know, 50 yards or so. And all of a sudden, it came back and started circling and teetering and just started losing control. And it just started going down. I knew it was dying. And like 10 feet before it hit the ground, 
I see a jet stream of blood just erupt from, just a cloud of blood in the air. It was the weirdest thing. I've never seen that. It was super odd. But as I'm paddling up to it to pick this duck up for him, um, I had the weirdest in intuition, like gut type feeling that there was a band on it. But I, it was just a quick random thought. So I picked the bird up five seconds later, and the first thing I noticed is freaking this band here, man. And I freaked out and thought it was freaking awesome. So I get back to the pod, and uh, or where he's sitting, and uh, I get about five, ten feet away and pick a bird up. But I picked it up with my thumb covering it, and I freaking tossed it to him. Oop, and he discovered momentarily a few minutes later that a band on it. It was, it, was, it was awesome. It was an awesome experience, man. I couldn't believe my eyes. Uh, it's been about five years, I don't know, since I probably got in a band. I can't remember the last year I got one. It was a snow goose that I did get out here in this area. And uh, it's kind of funny. There's a little mark from a pellet. Nicked it right there. I don't know if it was from me, but no. a couple of pellets right in the head. Brought it down. Eventually, had to bleed out a little bit first. But Yeah. It's crazy. Probably just that close to not having that. You know, it's, it's always like that, though. I mean, not always, but it's a game of inches, man. It's a game of centimeters. It's just crazy. We were talking about on the way here, all the, the whole process of duck hunting, all the little steps you have to do, you know, and there's so much of it. But when it all comes together in the very end, it's just that one moment, man. And, um, yeah, it just, it just feels really good. It just feels really good to be making good shots and having a good time out there, you know, just being in the marsh. I didn't want to leave. I just wanted to lay out there on the water, just looking at the trees and being out there. I just love it, you know. It's it's really good for you. Really good. And here's a close-up of the birds from today. Nick cleaned up on the teal. We both got a hen pintail, limited out on pintails. Nick got his limit of hen mallards. There's my pintail. I got a really nice widgeon. One golden eye came into the diver deeks that I had set out this morning as a little test. There's the prize right there. Big old fat mallard with digits around its leg.
Shoot him again. Shoot him again if you can. There's the first green head of December for us. Showed a little bit of interest in the decoys. I'll go pick him up in a few minutes. Good morning. It is Saturday, December the 3rd, 2022. And uh, Sarah and I made the decision to come over to Eastern Washington for the first big hunt of uh, December this season. Uh, we've been blessed with a lot of winter weather really early this year. Uh, it snowed on the 30th of November pretty much statewide with a lot of Arctic air that came in behind it. And uh, there's easily five to six inches over here on the Columbia Basin right now. It's in the mid-20s, in the single digits at night. And uh, we went to a, a previous spot this morning, trying to set up somewhere else, but it had inches of ice on it. And I couldn't really see where the end of the ice line was, so we just decided to come back to an old favorite down here in the pothole region. Uh, it gets really good in conditions like this. I love hunting when winter has blessed us with its trademark weather. Uh, the wind is supposed to pick up out of the north today, 10 to 15 miles per hour, but it's really calm right now. now we've already had a little bit of action. Uh, we had one lone goose. I called it down, circled the decoys, and we dropped it right here behind me in this, uh, in this stuff. We thought it was hurt or at least dead. and. We found it and it was very much alive and it took off flying and we uh, missed again as it was flying off into the distance and then uh, we have one Drake Greenhead already. There's definitely a pattern to these cattail marshes and it usually is the best late morning into the afternoon and evening. Let's see if we can hit December off right and pull some quality birds out of this hole. It's approaching 10.30 a.m. and like a switch, the north wind has picked up pretty good. I have a variety of decoys out moving into the late season. I have a handful of bluebills out there. Got some pintails, widgeon, gadwall, green wing teal. Try to cover all the species that are in the area right now. It is a morning lull. It does seem like a little bit less birds around than there was three weeks ago. We have a small pile of ducks built up. We got three in the bag right now. Got these teal set right along the edge of the ice. So it just seems the ducks, when they feel safe, get as close to the shore as possible. And when they're in distress, they kind of go further out away. I'm just trying to replicate that with the decoy spread. See if we can catch some birds coming back from their morning feed.
it is 2 o'clock p.m. and the days seem really short this time of the year. December has definitely hit with all of its winter glory for sure and there's nothing that I love more than hunting waterfowl in winter conditions. Um, we got here a little late today. It was kind of slow at first and steady and then I'd say about I don't know 10 30 11 o'clock it was like a switch turned on and the wind picked up out of the north pretty good and uh, very steady action from then on to this point so far this December I don't know it's only been one hunt into it but it's very reminiscent of 2015 when we got early snow early ice you know building up to Christmas and uh, just the gadwalls were everywhere I don't think I've seen this many gadwalls here in a couple years you know it's it's been a few and uh, I always love shooting gray ducks Say about one o'clock all the mallards started working us and there's a lot more mallards here than I thought earlier uh, I suspected it was a little slower at first but it was just a lull in the day there's actually quite a few birds uh, using this area and uh, wintering over at the moment on the Columbia Basin here's a closer look at the birds today A lot of gadwalls. We actually missed a lot of opportunities on the mallards. Sarah pulled one this morning though. And I got six gadwalls and one green wing teal. Nice big drake gray ducks. It is Sunday, December the 4th. We're back at it on a frosty, frozen, cold morning. I already had one flock bless us, and we got a pintail and a widgeon out of it. Don't really know how today is going to go. It's a lot slower, but this place is always better in the evening. It is forecasted to snow this afternoon. See how everything turns out. Well, it is the noon o'clock hour, and since we have a long ways to go, and it looks like there's a pretty good winter storm brewing on the pass, we are opting uh, to pick up a little early today. Sometimes it just feels like at this spot, the second day uh, is never really as good as the first. We definitely had some opportunities, and we pulled some quality birds, though. Um, Sarah got a really nice Drake Widgeon right there, right off the, uh, to end the day. Got, a, got one gadwall. I made a nice crack shot on this hooded merganser. It's actually a really good specimen. And I pulled this pintail out of a flock of widgeon first thing in the morning. And this widgeon was also mixed in with the same flock that the pintail was in. Uh, I think it's a lot colder today. There's a few flakes of snow starting to fall. 
And uh, like yesterday's switch, the north wind is starting to pick up, north, northwest for sure. Uh, had to keep the hands covered today just because they were getting numb. There are a lot of birds in the area for sure. There's a ton of mallards around. They're just all patterned and uh, they were heading off in another direction. I'm gonna go see if I can catch up with the field that I think they're going in um, and just to see if my predictions are correct. But uh, here it is, December. November is officially over with. The easy days are done. A lot of the dumber ducks are dead and uh, it's time just to get a little wiser and change up the tactics along with the birds. Here's a closer look at the bird's bag today. The pintail and the widgeon were in the first flock. They coyed pretty good first thing in the morning. The hooded merganser is definitely very pretty. It always seems like you miss all the other birds a lot and then a hooded merganser comes in at one of the hardest shots to make and you make just one of the nicest shots of the day. Don't even think about it. Just graveyard dead. And Sarah got that beautiful specimen of a widgeon. I love getting widgeon over here. You're used to them on the coast. Over here they just have more of a rocky mountain flavor for sure. Well, here's our evening meal after a weekend of shooting gadwalls. We breasted them out and we thin sliced the breast meat, fried it, chopped up some peppers, some onions, some fajita mix, grab yourself some tortillas, make yourself a duck fajita.